Good evening everybody. Uh, welcome to my latest installment of my Cowboys vlog. Uh, so this week, uh, watch some more film, more scouting reports on defensive line this time. Uh, been a little bit of a hectic week this week, so not as much time as I had last week when I did the O-line. So I just did a couple of players this time. Uh, one defensive end and one defensive tackle. Uh, both more of the higher echelon names. Um, and again, as I go forward, if I've got time, I might try some more under-the-radar guys. Uh, so for defensive end, I looked at uh, Coney Ely from Missouri. Uh, he's kind of been a name thrown around in talk about the Cowboys, uh, mostly since we lost Ware because of the idea of the similar body and similar, you know, position, obviously. And he's kind of a guy that I warmed up to a little bit. Um, so I figured it was about time to watch some film on him. Um, and for anybody who listens to the shows on the Cowboy website, some of the guys on there haven't exactly been all that high on him, and I've always kind of wondered why. Well, I only I got to see a couple of a couple of games for him from last year, and I think I was able to kind of figure out why they were down on him because um, had never really watched him play, so I had some high expectations, which I probably shouldn't have had. I uh, should have come in with a clean slate, but with high expectations, there was a dramatic disappointment. Um, I watched his games against Georgia and against Florida. Um, obviously, I wanted to pick his games against SEC competition um, to kind of see how he did. Georgia, that was pretty ugly. Um, did not see him getting hardly any push at all on the tackles. Uh, most of the time, if anybody was doing the pushing, he was getting pushed backwards. Um, I saw no explosion off the snap, no speed. Uh, he was able to get to the quarterback once when he was lined up as a defensive tackle, which they did do that quite a bit. They kind of rotated him between playing defensive end and defensive tackle, um, which leads to why I think I've heard some people say that people might try him at a three technique on the D-line. Um, but he did get to the quarterback on a quarterback stunt, on a twist stunt, with when he was at defensive tackle, but he got there second. One of his teammates got there first. Um, and that was uh, Michael Sam. I got to see a lot of him watching these games, too. And out of the two guys, Michael Sam looks way more like a guy who should be projected in round one over Ely. Um, but that's beside the point. Um, he did. Uh, he was able to get inside or get into the pocket, into the quarterback's face a little bit um, with an inside move, but he lost contain pretty easily, and the quarterback was able to get around him. Um, bit hard on some option fakes, which when you're dealing with Georgia and you're talking about, um, yeah, when you're talking about Georgia, kind of hard to imagine you get you'd bite on option fakes um, that hard and get beat around the edge by. Aaron Murray, but that's what happened on this one. Uh, like I say, just overall a very unimpressive performance by him. Not consistent with pass rush pressure. Not consistent against the run. Um, seems slow. Lack of explosion. Not only Michael Sam, but the other folks they had playing at defensive end severely outplayed him in this game. Um, just based on this game alone, I would... I'd be shocked to project him at anything higher than late third. Um, and that would be more based on body type and potential. Um, so, yeah, this was a bad, bad game by him. Um, I watched Florida. It helped a little bit. Um, there was definitely, you saw the glimpses of explosion and speed in the game against Florida. Still not what I would consider first round worthy explosion and speed, but you at least saw some. Um, against the run, he still just got mugged. He didn't get anywhere close to a runner unless the runner was having to cut, you know, to avoid somebody else and he happened to be in the right spot. Um, still, even with the, with the better explosion and speed, still not very effective beating his man to get to a quarterback. Um, he did get a big sack and a forced fumble in the game, but when you watch the replay of that, Nobody on the offensive line touched him, so he just had a straight line to the quarterback on that play. Um, 
I do give him kudos that he showed some better pursuit in this game, where he kind of chased down down the line across the field uh, to at least get involved in in tackles on a play. Um, unfortunately, you know, other plays instead of going full out, he seemed to kind of let up um, when I think he could have given some better effort. Um, Honestly, the best plays I saw him make in this game, either nobody blocked him or they barely touched him. Which, you know, good for him that he took advantage of that. Bad that you mainly noticed him when he wasn't getting touched. Um, and, you know, and watching this game, because I was watching on draftbreakdown.com, so you're seeing kind of the TV film on it. So the announcers were talking about him having a lot of having a great game because he got a lot of quarterback pressures and that kind of thing. When you actually watch the film, the quarterback pressures he got was mostly because of either coverage or the people on the, the other folks on the defensive line were kind of pushing him towards, pushing it, the quarterback towards him, or the quarterback just made some bad decisions. Um, he did play better in this game, uh, but I don't think he had a great performance. I thought, again, that Michael Sam just ate him for lunch in terms of a comparison between the two players. Um, again, he did make a good inside move when he was lined up at defensive tackle again in this game to get pressure on the quarterback and he was able to force a bad throw. Um, so like I alluded to earlier, I think I really see what people are talking about it potentially having him as a three technique because I thought he was a lot more effective when he was lined up at defensive tackle than he was at defensive end. Um, I'll take a brief side note to mention Michael Sam just a tiny bit because I mentioned I did see a lot of him in this game. I didn't go back and watch him specifically on a lot of plays, but he just kept showing up. Um, quarterback pressures, sacks, tackles for loss, he was everywhere. Um, so probably towards, if we get closer to the draft, he might be a guy I look at more specifically. Um, just to kind of watch him in some more games, but he looked, just based off of these two games, he looked like a way better prospect than Ely. So I think he's a little bit lower rated, mainly because of size, and that he's not as much, you know, not as good with time, speed, that kind of thing, but you put him in pads, and this guy's everywhere. Um, so, you know, just based off of what I quickly saw, I think he'd be a steal in some later rounds. Um, probably not as a full-time starter in the NFL, which is probably another reason he's been knocked down a little bit, but definitely as a rotational pass rush guy, definitely a guy you'd want to take a chance on. In terms of Ely, I know he's rated to go in the first round. Me personally, he's a tough guy to go with. Uh, you could see flashes where you could see him. I could see him being a second-round talent. Games like Georgia... I'm not sure I'd even want to touch him, but I'd suppose you could put him in third or fourth round. So just to be just to give an average, I'll call him a third round just from the film that I watched. And I will happily eat crow if he becomes better than that. Um, and again, that's just my personal opinion. Um, obviously, again, feel free to watch, watch the film uh, yourself and make your own determination on it. So that's uh, Coney Ely. Uh, the guy I looked at. Uh, I was going to do Aaron Donald, but he's kind of been talked about every which way you can, so I'm sure you've heard enough about Aaron Donald. Uh, I decided to take a look at Dominic Easley out of Florida. He's kind of another name of a three-technique guy who's had to deal with these injuries. So I know as Cowboy fans, we kind of look at guys, especially with a history of some knee injuries, and we want to kind of hold off, but I figure because of the three-technique position, I'd take a look at him, see what all the fuss is about. Uh, watched... Not couldn't watch too much on him from this last year because obviously he got hurt. Um, so I just focused on his game against uh, the U, uh, Miami. Um, notice right off the bat, he's got really quick feet. Um, really explodes off the snap. Um, you know, they the offense snaps the ball and he kind of looks like a cannonball just you know barreling into the line. Um, Deceptively good speed. I was not expecting him to be as fast as he was, but he was able to chase plays down across the field. Um, and he wasn't just a big guy kind of bumbling towards the play. He was almost getting, almost beating linebackers to the spot. Um, they played him at defensive tackle mainly. I also saw him take some snaps at defensive end. Um, 
didn't really notice a whole lot of better or worse on that. Um, I definitely think he's probably more suited for defensive tackle, um, just because of you know this the foot speed. I think of especially pro tackles would give him trouble if he tried to play him at end. Um, with the explosion he does, he does get a little bit out of control at times because um, he seems to be very intent on just destroying the man in front of him. Um, and occasionally he'll lose his footing because he's trying to put so much power into it that he loses a little bit of technique. Um, and he can get a little bit off balance, fall on one play, he fell down and then still went after the quarterback and ended up getting a roughing the passer call. Um, was a little surprised he didn't get off blocks as consistently as I thought he would um, and he didn't quite get as much separation uh, he seemed to be content with holding his blocks or holding onto his blockers a lot and not really trying to get off the blocks which I found a little bit surprising um, other times he'll get or another thing he'll get a little bit too low from what I could tell off the snap so I'm not sure if he's just trying to gain leverage, which would be good, but he ends up kind of getting too low to where the guards and centers can kind of just lay on him. Um, so that's something that probably needs to be addressed. Uh, again, good quickness uh, and some good moves to get you know between center and guard. Uh, made a big stop in the backfield on a play like that where he split the gap. Um, also makes a lot of quick moves that kind of took a lot of the guards and even sometimes some of the tackles when he was lined up at end by surprise got some forced some holding calls on him. Um, you know other plays again taking out some runners in the backfield because of just some super quick moves and just speed off the line. Um, so definitely I think his greatest attributes great burst speed and explosion off the snap. Um, he has the potential to have some good power at the point of attack to go along with his quickness, but he's not always consistent in a lot of his moves, and sometimes he gets, you know, held a bit too much, um, not separating from his block, so it's something that he needs to work on there. But you can definitely see the tools. Um, obviously, the key with him is going to be his health. Um, to this point, we still haven't even heard what the status on his knee is, and I think that that determination will kind of determine where he goes in this draft. Um, Talent-wise, you can definitely see why he could have been projected as a first-round pick. Um, injury, obviously, is going to change that. I think the highest he goes is the second round, if he's cleared medically. Um, I don't really see him falling past the third, maybe early fourth, unless his medical comes back that he's got a big problem in his knees. You know, like maybe like a Ronald Leary situation. Um, so I could see him anywhere from like second to third round, potentially. Uh, fit with the Cowboys, you know, obviously that other guy to rotate in on the defensive line. Question for the Cowboys, do we want to take a risk on another guy who's got injury history? And this is a history of injuries to both knees. And you're talking about a high-impact position there on the defensive line. So I'm not sure if that might scare him off. Um... Uh, and for me personally, I'm not too sure what I would do yet with him uh, in terms of drafting him or not. I'd consider it, I guess, but the the injury scares me, so I'd probably be more apt to take somebody else unless the value was just too high to pass up. So that's kind of the scouting reports I did this week, uh, just Coney Ely and uh, Dominique Easley, and then threw a little bit of Michael Sam in there. Um, as always, I'll kind of give you the results of my latest mock draft simulator. Uh, this one was kind of interesting because I saw a lot of stuff that I don't see a chance at happening in this, but when you do these simulators, you got to take what you get. So, uh, round one, Khalil Mack fell to 16. No way does that happen. I don't see any way possible. Um, but other guys like Anthony Barr and... Um, uh, the defensive tackles, they were all gone. So, you know, Khalil Mack, the potential of using him an outside linebacker, I think especially at that point in the draft, if he fell to 16, too high to pass, so I took him. Second round, Timmy Jernigan from Florida State was still there. Again, I don't see that happening. 
Um, I could easily see him going before our first round pick, potentially to Chicago. So again, value way too high to pass on. And in the second round, I think they'd be more willing to take that one technique tackle anyway. And I, from what I've heard, that's how they view him. So I think that'd be a good pick there. Third round, Trent Murphy, the end out of Stanford. I think that value fits that pick there and gives us that defensive end to kind of get some pass rush pressure. Uh, fourth round, potentially a little bit of controversial pick, uh, Bishop Sankey running back out of Washington. Um, at the time, and I didn't write down everybody who was available, but not much available in terms of our needs, um, but a lot of running backs happen to be available in the fourth round, and I don't think he'd last anywhere near to the fourth round, so the value for the spot, you know, kind of led me to take him. And then round five, this is kind of where uh, got wide receivers involved a little bit. You know, the other guys that were there, some more running backs, uh, some lesser named corners I've not really heard much about. Uh, so I went with Bruce Ellington, wide receiver out of South Carolina. Uh, just add more wide receiver depth. And we've hit some good picks in round five, or in the later rounds, round five and six at wide receiver. So I uh, figured it was worth the pick there. Um, so that's it for this week. Did the mock draft simulator there. And then those two scouting reports. Uh, so again, if you want to check out the mock draft simulator, it's fanspeak.com. And I'll put the link down below. As always, if you want to check out the other cowboy vlogs I've done before, go ahead and click on the playlist. And you're welcome to subscribe to my channel to see when I do some future vlogs. And with that, this video is over. So have a good night, and go Cowboys.